Okay, so we can start. Uh, thank you guys for your patience and uh, thank you all for having us here. Um, it's, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Vladimir Filkov. I'm a professor of computer science at UC Davis. And I'm here with Anirudh Ramchandran, uh, an MS ma master student in, in our group, and Lee Kang Yin, a PhD student in my group. We have been working on understanding open source software and the way programmers code and work together for a number of years. And lately, we are very interested in open source software sustainability. And we're going to tell you today about a tool we built to explore uh, ASF uh, incubator projects. And there's a, there's a link to the tool up on top, and it will show up again in the slides when we talk about it. But first, we'll give you a little introduction. And this will be a joint presentation. I will at some point switch to Lee Kang, and then he will switch to Anirudh who is responsible for the tool. This is work funded by the National Science Foundation. Our motivation is that uh, sustainability is very important because most nascent open source software projects are not sustainable. Uh, most of them actually fail. Uh, different areas uh, of science, software engineering and organizational behavior especially, are some of the disciplines that have studied success and sustainability in open source. In the past, we have been successful in using socio-technical networks and socio-technical analysis to study open source software development. So we decided to apply that to sustainability too. In particular, uh, we got a new uh, NSF grant to UC Davis and University of Massachusetts Amherst to study open source sustainability. Uh, by adding to our socio-technical background uh, organizational analysis, uh, which is the, the expertise of our colleagues from Amherst. Uh, our starting point in the study of sustainability is ASF and the ASF incubator in particular, where projects uh, either graduate or retire to join the ASF. Our goals in this initial stage of our work is to identify what determines sustainability by comparing practices in successful and unsuccessful projects and to also develop tools to help the open source community to be more agile. Another motivation is to complement the existing clutch tool analysis in ASF. Uh, existing uh, clutch tool provides useful analytics which is based on the domain knowledge of the ASF community. Uh, we can see here a picture of what that looks like. For every project, we get a certain number of colors in different categories, indicating uh, that some things we need looking at uh, more carefully or something has to be done. In particular, red indicates that there is an issue uh, that the podling has to take care of. Now, uh, we want to complement this for two reasons. The clutch analysis is not longitudinal thus cannot historically inform or make predictions so that one can react quickly. Uh, the clutch analysis tool is also not dependent on context, thus is not project environment specific. We decided to go about this from a perspective of theory. Uh, as I said, we, are, we have been using socio-technical systems for a while now, and that's one component uh, to this. Uh, Socio-technical systems theory uh, combines the social and the technical aspects of a system, in particular people discussing things, how they do things, and the technical people contributing to files and changing the artifact uh, with certain goals. Contingency theory, on the other hand, uh, says that there is no best way to govern an organization, and it states that decisions in an organization must depend on its internal structure and be dependent on the external context. So combining these two, uh, we uh, uh, put together uh, an abstraction to represent our uh, framework as networks uh, for OSS socio-technical systems. And uh, I will let uh, Lee Kang now take over and explain to us how these networks are built and how from them we can then forecast sustainability over time. Go ahead, Likan. Thank you, Vladimir. So we use, we know the socio-technical system is complex. It involves many 
uh, events like collaboration, like um, multitasking. So we use the networks as the abstraction for OSS social technical system. And here I want to talk about how we build those uh, networks. First, we have the email data, and we use the email data to build our social networks. The nodes in the network are the developer who send or receive emails, and the, the edges indicate if two developers have social communications. For example, since Apache has this mailing list um, mechanism, if developer A send an email on the mailing list and developer B replies to that email, it states that developer B receives sort of signal from developer A. So we form an edge in the network between A and B. And that's how we build the social network. And for technical network, we use the commits data. So the technical part of the artifact. And the nodes are the developer and the file extensions in the tool. The edges indicate who commit code changes to the, code, to the files and we aggregate them by their uh, file extensions. And we can find there are sort of multitasking and collaboration behavior in a technical network. Uh, on the bottom, we can show, we show the percentage of the uh, developer contribute to one type of file and, uh, ver and uh, vice versa. We can see this type of file is contributed by maybe multiple developers. Next slide, please. Okay, so here I'm going to talk about how we build our model. Firstly, we have the project matrix, which are the basics of the OSS. Uh, they are, for example, a number of commits, a number of emails, number of developers. Those are basic information about the project. And we have the social technical networks as the context of the project. So long story in short, uh, we build monthly social technical networks, and then we use some of the project matrix of that month to fit this information, fit this data into a LSTM model. And we train the model, and then we use it to predict, to give us the forecast. And here I'm showing you the one illustration of the forecast. Uh, next, please. Okay. So here um, we're seeing our model can be very effective and have, have very high accuracy. The, bot the top two curves are the curves that with social technical networks. And the bottom two curves are the curve with only project, project matrix. Uh, meaning it doesn't have the social technical tech context. As we can see in the figure, we, if we only fit the first eight months of the project incubation data, our model can already achieve 90% plus uh, accuracy or F1 score. However, the, the bottom two curves without the social technical context is much lower, showing that the social technical context can provide predictive power to the model. Next. Now, this is a, an example of Project 82. As we can see, even Project 82 has experienced some downturns. It eventually graduated. Here, we are using the project ID, not the name, because we don't want to pointing fingers at the project. We are not showing the full name of the project. And our model shows that we can detect uh, when the project are taking down terms and up terms as well. So we can predict and then provide actionable uh, comments to the project manager when they are, their project are taking down terms. For example, we can say, oh, now the project is not looking very good. Maybe you should increase your uh, clustering coefficient of your social network, or you should add more developer to one type of file to make it uh, more efficient. And now I'm transitioning to Anyroot to tell us about the tool and how to use the tool. Thank you, Lika. So over here, we just present to you a high-level overview of our dashboard. 
Um, we can understand our dashboard in three parts. Uh, the first part, next please. So um, the first part we can understand as our project selector and the month selector window. Over there, we are able to select uh, from a uh, array of projects which are retired and graduated. And also the user is able to uh, scroll across different months. Uh, over there, we also present when the particular project started and when it, when it ended. Uh, moving ahead, uh, we would look into the graduation forecast. Uh, basically, uh, our models uh, forecast curve. And um, uh, using a red dot, we are able to indicate the current month of the project. Uh, moving ahead, uh, we also provide uh, in our dashboard uh, details about the project, um, a quick snapshot of what the project is about, uh, the current status of the project, uh, some of the sponsors and the mentors of the project. Uh, as well, below it, we provide uh, project reports. So uh, the project reports are the reports submitted by the project to the ASFI Foundation. Um, next, we can go to the meat of our dashboard, which is basically our social network and our technical network. As mentioned by Likang, uh, the, the social network and the technical network have either a sender node or a committer edge. And then um, in the social network, we go to a receiver edge, which is basically when a receiver or a developer has responded to a certain email from the, you know, the sender uh, nodes. Um, once we uh, look at the social and technical networks, uh, we also provide um, some statistics about the current month of the selected projects. Uh, moving ahead, yeah, so just below the dashboard, we are able to provide uh, statistics like number of emails, the senders for that particular month, uh, the number of commits, the committers for that particular month, and the commits made per uh, committer. Uh, now that we looked at a high level overview of the dashboard, uh, we'll move, move ahead to understand how we could better use the functionality of the dashboard and how to get started to use the dashboard. Uh, next, please. Yeah. So as we mentioned uh, in the top left, we are able to select the projects. So using the selection window, one is able to select projects uh, from either graduated or retired. And once we select a project, uh, all the other windows of the dashboard should populate, uh, giving us the social network, the technical network, the graduation forecast, and other details like the project details, uh, project reports, etc. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's also a month slider in the project selector window itself. Uh, the user is able to slide across different months um, to look at uh, uh, snapshots of how uh, the social network and the technical network is doing in different aspect, uh, different months. As well, uh, the user is able to uh, hover over the graduation forecast um, in order to change the month. Uh, next, please. Yeah. So now uh, we just look at a. Yeah. Now uh, we just look at a transition of, uh, for example, the user hovered over the graduation forecast to maybe um, a, a certain month. So we can see that the whole dashboard uh, and the visuals just change. Uh, moving ahead, we will look uh, more into how uh, the user could interact with the social network. Next, please. Actually, one slide behind, please. Yeah, uh, we went one one slide ahead. So um, the interactivity that we provide in both the social network and the technical network is uh, the user is able to hover over a particular edge or a developer or a receiver, and uh, we're able to see um, we're able to deep dive into uh, which are the receiver developers that responded to the particular developer for that particular month and the selected project. So if you could move next. Uh, yeah, so as we see here, uh, we're able to see a particular developer has, you know, responded and emailed three to four different developers. And um, if we would hover over the receiver edges as well, we would be able to see uh, conversely uh, to what developers that particular receiver developer has responded as well. And we have a very similar functionality um, with the technical network as well. So if we would hover over, we could see uh, to which file uh, the particular developer made comments to. So if we move ahead as well. As well as providing um, interactive functionality, um, you know, to help 
uh, a particular user looking at a dashboard or uh, looking at a project. We are also able to provide uh, the particular emails and the particular commits made by the particular developer. So if you would click on a particular developer, that becomes a, a pop-up window through which we could again click to, pro to get us the actual link of the either the comment made by the developer or the email sent by the developer. And this allows us to um, maybe deep dive into some of the down months, as we mentioned, and see if uh, there were certain things that the project could change during that particular down months. Like Likang mentioned, adding more developers to that particular project for that month or uh, making more comments. So uh, that's the high level overview and some of the interactivity and uh, the functionality of using our dashboard. Um, thank you. Uh, all the links to the dashboard is um, is available here, uh, and the data we have as well is available uh, at, at the Zendo uh, link. And some of the papers that uh, we have published and we have used is available uh, at this particular link. So thank you so much, and uh, please feel free to ask um, any questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Just just to wrap up. Uh, uh, this this tool for us allows us to study uh, these systems, uh, but we would like to interact with the Apache community and to see how we can make this uh, also a part of the community for self uh, inspection, introspection, and and so on. So if you, we would like to open it up and be open to making changes to this tool uh, to make it more useful in practice. So uh, for the rest of the time, uh, we're going to take questions. Thank you. Any questions? Maybe we can take a look at the chat, if there's anything there. Yeah, as of now, I don't really see anything. So uh, Sharan is asking, have we already shared this info with the incubator? Uh, we have uh, talked to ASF. We are actually uh, doing some interviews with incubator people. And uh, so the plan is to share it with the incubator, certainly, uh, and initiate a conversation there. Um, we were looking forward to doing so. And, and this is just to give a... a an opportunity for comments and how to improve this, but we are certainly in communication with them, yes. Any other questions? And feel free to contact us also. Uh, my contact info is on the on my web page at UC Davis. Yes, so uh, as I said, the NSF has funded our project and uh, we are in this for the long run. And uh, so this is going to be a four to five year project. We are certainly planning to uh, expand on this tool, especially adding uh, some institutional analysis. Uh, in terms of actions that people take and how those actions interact with the outcomes. Oh, thank you, Curtis. Uh, we will uh, certainly take a look at Kibble and reach out to Sharon if interested. So Sharon, very happy to talk to you. Uh, we'll, we'll reach out. Uh, Craig asks if we are surprised by any of the results we found. Uh, so that's a great question. Uh, in uh, so, so this is a three-part work, uh, right? One of the issues was forecasting, and that's the forecast on the screen uh, up there in the right. So what we found is that many different factors 
influence the actual prediction let's say at month eight we are predicting there is a 20 percent chance of success uh, towards graduation uh, our surprise is that that prediction depends on uh, many different factors and not just one so uh, to actually do well in these forecasts we have to take into account uh, all of the project metrics and a number of social and technical network parameters so that's the surprise uh, the flip side of that is that we don't really know how to change those to make them more positive yes i mean we can say go ahead and get more developers or be more active but sometimes these are more subtle so we've noticed a downturn uh, in some cases five or six months before the project itself noticed an, uh, a downturn and this is in our uh, FSE uh, 2021 paper. So uh, yes, there are surprises uh, and we are continuing to work on how to, to address some of the issues by having multiple determinants of the outcomes. Thank you, Craig. Any more questions? Any questions about the tool that Anirudh so, so well put together or the data coming from Lee Kang? Oh, I'm glad you think so, Craig. I was just browsing through Kibble here while we are talking. And uh, yeah, I can see a lot of overlap there. It seems like a lot of people contributed. Great. Okay, if there's no more questions, I, I guess uh, uh, we can stick around. Um, yes, I can certainly post the links there. I will have to stop sharing that. Um, maybe I can ask uh, Lee Kang or uh, Anirudh to post the three links for Apex for the data. And for the papers, oh, the papers link is already there. There is the Apex demo. Thank you, Anirudh. And uh, there's a Nodo link. Thank you. I may have, um, okay, so um, I stopped sharing. Oh, uh, that sounds interesting. What is a relationship analyzer? Great, actually we are, 
we are looking into uh, something like that. We are, we are trying to understand relationships, but also actions arising from uh, conversations. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely look into Kibble and 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 reach out to you, Sharon. In our past work, we have found that uh, there are people who contribute to multiple projects on GitHub in general. Uh, in ASF, uh, is that also the case for, for many people or is that rare? Okay. Well, let's continue this conversation uh, through email and uh, it would be great to, to, to have you uh, uh, come over virtually maybe uh, to some of our sessions and then present on Kibble. Perfect, okay, I'll be in touch. This is great. Uh, we got such good comments. Yeah, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, everyone. And Li Kang and Anirudh, thank you so much for the great work. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Anne. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew.